So we just probably watched the greatest Spider-Man movie of all time, right? <sighs> Man, okay. Well, this might be an all-timer. So Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Wait, does this movie even need a traditional intro? I mean, we all already know what I'm gonna say. Ah, fuck it. Imagine it's the year 2018, my dear viewer. The times where the days were brighter. A time that the only public safety concerns were nothing. There's no getting that girl back now, my brothers. She's a part of the yesteryears now. But aside from all that, the recently introduced stomach bug that seems to be affecting every studio's ability to have competent character writing and originality or creativity wasn't in effect just yet. So 2018 was a great year for film. From Deadpool 2, to The Incredibles 2, to Jurassic World 2. Hold up, wait. I know we got some bangers in here. Oh yeah, right. Anyway, from Solo A Star Wars Story to Transformers Bumblebee, there's truly only one movie that comes to mind that was so ground- Listen, hear me out. I know it all sounds cliche, I know. But when you actually think about it, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was truly one of those cliche review sounding movies from groundbreaking to mold shattering to you'll give up your firstborn to go watch this movie. And since at this point that's already common knowledge, not the giving up your firstborn part, I hope none of you guys just had an epiphany, but the fact that now Miles Morales has become a household name and the fact that I've already discussed Into the Spider-Verse at length in the video I released two days ago. And yes, I did just insert a shameless self-promotion, so go watch that, you squares. But since that's the case, and the mood has been set, and you know what comes after that. So let's just get into it. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was god tier. It's been a while since I've had this type of praise for a film, and the feeling of watching actual entertainment in the cinemas, to the point where I actually saw this movie twice in its opening weekend. It's pretty uncanny, but for this, it only felt natural. And while the fangirling has been going on basically ever since the first available showing to the general public, and don't worry, I'm not making fun, I'm about to shamelessly contribute. We first should talk plot. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is a story of fate and destiny. I guess that's kind of the same thing. The story again follows the characters of Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy. Picking up around a year and a couple months from where we left off from Into the Spider-Verse, we watch as the two characters struggle with, well, typical Spider-Man problems. With the two struggling to fight crime and protect their city, while at the same time hiding their respective identities from the ones they love most, with Miles' father having more of a partnership with his Spider-Man, the same cannot be said for Gwen whose father is actively trying to hunt their Spider-Woman after a wrong place, wrong time situation. Or is it that led to the death of their Peter Parker? But when an old-timey Leonardo da Vinci-type vulture shows up in Gwen's universe, leading to the inevitable truth and confrontation with her father about her identity, the two simply can't see eye to eye, leading Gwen to join the super-secret, not-so-secret Spider-Man society when recruited by newcomers to the franchise Jessica Drew, and Miguel O'Hara. Oh yeah, we'll be talking about them later. Trust me. Miles, on the other hand, while seemingly finding his footing every day as Brooklyn's new Spider-Man, isn't doing so hot as Miles, struggling with the balance of being a hero and being part of a family, let alone when a new problem arises, when new villain and quote-unquote nemesis Spot arrives on the scene. A scientist that was there on the night of the third act of the last film out for revenge after the destruction of the Super Collider turned him into a game from 2007. With the power to now travel to different universes, Spot is now determined to become stronger and stronger, vowing to take away everything from Miles as he did to him. With Gwen being sent to Miles' universe in order to track down and monitor the newly introduced threat, and after a lengthy but relatively awesome scene of a failed attempt to capture the villain, Miles follows Gwen back to the Spider Society in order to help fix the problem that he himself caused. But after learning the true nature of the society he felt he looked up to, and the destiny that he and all spider people alike that awaits him, 
betrayals and lies from friends and loved ones, and a plot twist that dares to even question his entire identity and existence, will Miles Morales be able to overcome the destiny that befits all spider people, or will the weight of being Spider-Man simply become too overwhelming for him to handle? Sheesh! All right. Well, with all of that out of the way, let's just go ahead and say it again. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was God tier. First things first, we're going to get into the characters. As mentioned before, for better or for worse, depending on your personal interest of the characters, this is as much a Gwen Spider-Woman film as much as it was a Miles Morales. Gwen's backstory with her father and the emotional toll it was not only on herself to hide her identity, but the emotional toll it was on her father as well, for the lack of closure and the responsibility he feels to bring Peter Parker's killer to justice is brilliantly written and pretty remarkable to say the least. And while I don't want to do this, unfortunately, I think I have to. Miles' personal family story wasn't nearly as well written, believable, and emotionally investing as Gwen's. When giving a brief comparison, Miles isn't being hunted down by the law and a father with a murder wanted sign hanging over their head. He has a pretty good relationship with his family as Miles and the law and the community as Spider-Man. He's just kind of, uh, I don't know. I can't say it. Take it away, Aunt Daughter. I don't know. Just don't be a dick. I'm such a dick. Yeah, he's just not really cool. Kind of selfish, to be honest. And that's fine. He's a kid. That makes sense. But most of Miles' problems are pretty easily solvable if he just sat down and literally thought about anything for five minutes. And while I'm not here to compare traumas and backstories, there's no point in that. Anime's taught me that there's always a sadder backstory. I just wasn't nearly as invested in the personal problems of Miles as much as I was with Gwen. Until the third act. Holy shit! I'm not even going to spoil anything, obviously. Well, like minor spoilers. But once Miles Morales arrives in the secret, not-so-secret Spider-Man society, we get the star of the show. Meet Miguel O'Hara. Spider-Man 2099. And an absolute G. Once introduced, the movie takes a dramatic turn when it comes to the terms of pacing and stakes. When he goes on that five minute long monologue, or maybe it wasn't even a monologue, but I was just locked in, explaining to Miles the destiny that surrounds all spider people, the fate that awaits him, and the mistake that he- <coughs> <coughs> The fate that awaits him and where he fits in the universe and the grand schemes of things is, again, fantastically written. Oh look! It's another Oscar Isaac role that he absolutely shines in and steals the performance of the entire production. Wow, a man that knows his craft in a studio that knows how to not waste talent. Hmm, I wonder where we haven't seen this before. God, what a bunch of farts over there at Lucasfilm. Much like Marvel- Wait, I didn't mean to do that. That's- I'm not dissing Marvel right now. Well, I kinda am. Much like Marvel has been trying to capsulate on their failed attempts of character writing in Marvel's phases 4 through 5, Miguel O'Hara as Spider-Man 2099 is a perfectly written anti-hero for our protagonist, a character that seems to understand the severity and the consequences of the problems at hand, and a character that has a personal story to confirm and back up his beliefs. The term, sacrifice the few to save the many, comes to mind a story beat as old as time itself, but a phrase that seems pretty inescapable when it comes to us as a society, a dilemma that doesn't really have the right answer. When it comes to the animation side of things, much like in my review for Into the Spider-Verse, I'm pretty much going to repeat myself word for word because pretty much the same thing applies here. The animation, again, is absolutely gorgeous and stunning. It's creative and detailed within the different universes, and you can actually tell that the people working on this film truly have a love for their craft and the film itself. But it can definitely become overwhelming at times for sure, 
especially when it comes to photo sensitive people and just people that aren't used to watching this fast paced of a form of entertainment on a regular day to day basis. And before I really go into my conclusion here, as always, well, I just did it like two minutes ago, but man, I'll always find the time to throw in extra jabs at Marvel for being so dog shit and completely abandoning their core fan base with terrible character writing. Take notes, Taika Waititi. We all know you didn't actually care about Thor Love and Thunder, but this is comedy done right. Stop giving me screaming goats and getting kicked in the nuts jokes. It's getting old. At the end of the day, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is a fantastic movie. It was fun, imaginative, passionate, it has a great written story, following characters that you actually care about, and gorgeously choreographed fight scenes and animation to back it all up. And if you haven't guessed by now, you should definitely go give this film your money. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Uh, man, do I do another shameless self promo? Yeah, fuck it. Go watch my Into the Spider-Verse video as well. And when you do, come back to this because while I couldn't really think about it while writing this script, I'm going to come back and rank all of the Spider-Man movies from worst to best, which is cool because it would actually give me time to come off this high of this movie. So I'm going to say hold off on those comments of the rankings until then, but definitely leave your comments down below on this movie and whatever. Let's just go with spoilers. At this point, it's been like a week. So again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.